Can you define love? I mean, true love. Can you define true love? We thank you for watching this week's Fruit Bearing Guide on Love. In your arms of love. So, so can you? Can you define true love? How, how do we know the difference in true love versus spoken love versus emotional feelings versus affection? Romans 5 verse 8 clears that up for us. It is a clear picture of the love of God, but it also serves as the framework for a definition of agape love, God's love toward us. Here's the verse, Romans 5 verse 8, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So here's how that breaks down. God is the subject of the sentence. God shows his love for us. Well, God is the source of love. We can't truly love unless we know love from God. John makes that incredibly clear in his letter of 1 John. He's been taught and shown that love from Jesus himself, and now he's writing this letter in 1 John, and by my count, some 20 times, he shows that we will only love one another when we get that love from God. More directly, when we receive the love from God. So God must be the source. When we come up with a definition, when we seek the world's definition, we were, we're not dealing with true love. But second, notice the, the verb, God shows, God demonstrates, some translations may say. See, love is active. It's visible, it's tangible, it's measurable, it's observable. Sometimes it's measured in what it does not do, but it is still an action. When you go to 1 Corinthians 13, what we call the love chapter, you begin in verse number 4, and you go through verse 8, the first part of verse 8, you'll find 16 different qualities, and they're all verbs. Love is ultimately a verb. It's actionable. So God shows his love, notice, for us, the next clause, or the next phrase, for us. See, we are the recipient. And every action of love always has a recipient. It's always toward someone else. It's what's right and best for them. God is the lover. We are the loved ones. So there's always someone else on the other end, and it is in their best interest. Now you see that really come to the surface when you see the next couple of clauses. Because Romans 5 verse 8 says that he loves us, shows his love for us, in that while we were still sinners... Later, he's going to say in verse number 10, while we were his enemies. That means we were at odds with him when he first loved us. And you remember 1 John 4, 19 says, we love because he first loved us. That means there's no guarantee of us reciprocating his love. He gave without any guarantee of us returning it. He loved those whom it was most difficult to love, us, while we were against him. But then finally notice, how he loved us in those moments, or in spite of those moments, it was because Christ died. Love is sacrificial. It gives. God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. In this, we, we know what true love is, that Christ laid down his life for us. See, it's always giving, love is, and Christ gave the ultimate, his life, his innocent life for us. That's how we know what true love is. That's the picture of it. But this verse also helps give us a framework. It's love that's from God. It's visible, tangible, it's a verb. It's in the best interest of someone, even while they are at odds with us. And it's ultimately sacrificial and giving in its very nature. I'm Joey Sparks with the Parish, Church of Christ in Parish, Alabama. We're so grateful for you watching today and for your desire to learn and study more from the Word of God about the love of God. We hope to see you soon. Holy